In this series of 108 practice questions, I will walk you through 108 of the most commonly asked questions that can help you pass the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam. For each question, I will explain the correct answer in detail on each slide. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to ask in the comment section. Before we begin, I request you to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so you will be alerted whenever a new video in the series is released. Let's see the question number one. As a solution architect, how could you ensure that the new objects being uploaded to an S3 bucket in one region should be available in another region as well? Okay. I think you understand the question. So whenever user uploads an object into an S3 bucket, which is created in one region, should be available in an S3 bucket that is created in another region as well. So this is basically replicating the objects that are being uploaded to an S3 bucket. Okay, so let's go through the options. Create an S3 snapshot in the destination region. Snapshots are basically used to take the backup of an existing S3 buckets. It's not to replicate each object while upload is in progress. So option A is not the correct answer here. Option B, use a Lambda function to copy the objects to bucket in the destination region. Okay, using a Lambda function that can be done, but it's a overhead. The object needs to be automatically copied to another bucket in a different region. So this option is not viable. Option C, enable cross region replication on the bucket. This is the right answer. So we are looking for replicating the objects that are being uploaded to an S3 bucket. So this is an option that is a configuration which can be done at a bucket level in S3. So that enables automatic asynchronous copying of objects across buckets in different AWS regions. So option C is the right answer. So what is the option D here? So create S3 lifecycle methods. No, that's not the right answer. Question number two. A media company is planning to store their video files in AWS for a period of 15 days with a frequent access option. Okay. So what could be the cost effective solution for them? So this company wants to store all those video files that they create for their business and store them for a period of 15 days and they will access these files frequently and after 15 days they want to delete them right so what is the cost effective solution option a store the video files in s3 glacier and use lifecycle policies to delete them no the purpose of S3 Glacier is for the long term storage. So this is not the right option for this use case. Option B, use Amazon RDS to store video files and run a batch job to delete them. This is obviously very expensive solution. Storing the video files in uh, databases is uh, really expensive. So this is not the right one. Option C, Use NFS file system to store video files and then delete manually after 15 days. No. So deleting the files manually is an expensive task. It's a overhead. So the final option D is the correct answer here. Store the video files in S3 bucket and use object expiration policy to delete them after 15 days. Perfect. So this is how we can delete the objects after using for 15 days automatically by setting object expiration policy. So D is the right answer. Question number three, 
an application is running in US East 1 requires 6 EC2 instances running all the times. Okay. So what could be the best deployment solution to achieve fault tolerance if one of the AZ's availability zones in US East 1 is down? Select two options. Okay. To understand the question properly, this application requires six EC2 instances running at any given point of time. And these instances are deployed in US East 1 region. And US 1 East region, they have some availability zones, right? Let's take three availability zones from East 1 region. And here the requirement is, we need to achieve fault tolerance if one of the availability zones in this region is down. So if out of three availability zones, if one is down, still the application needs to be up and running with six EC2 instances. So that is our requirement here. Let's see. Option A, six instances in US East 1A, six instances in US East 11B and uh, no instances in US East 1C. So here, if you look at this option, if any of these three availability zones is down, say for example, US East 1A is down, we still have six instances running in US East 1B. So that, that meets our requirement. Okay, let's look at the next option, B. Three instances in US East 1A, three instances in US East 1B, and three instances in US East 1C. So here, they want to deploy three instances on each of these availability zones. So if one of these three availability zones is down, still we'll have two availability zones with three plus three, six EC2 instances up and running. So this is also another option we can go with. So we do not need to look at the other two options, but just look at them. Three instances in US East 1A, three instances in US East 1B, and no instances in US East 1C. Okay, so as per this option C, if East 1A instance is down, then we will have only three instances running in US East 1B, right? Since there are no instances running in US East 1C, we will not achieve the fault tolerance, which is our requirement here. So C is not the right answer. D, option D, two instances in US East 1A, two instances in US East 1B, and two instances in US East 1C. If one of these three availability zones is down, then we'll left with four instances running on two other availability zones. So option D is not correct. Question number four. A few microservices are deployed in VPC1 and VPC2, which are able to communicate with each other. So there are two VPCs. Okay, there is a new requirement to allow couple of microservices running in private subnets of both VPC1 and VPC2 to connect to the internet. But no one from outside of these two VPCs should be able to reach the microservices. As a solution architect, what's your solution for this use case? Okay, so to understand this question, there are two VPCs running with the some microservices deployed and these microservices are able to communicate with each other but the new requirement is they should be able to connect to the internet to perform some operations but no one should be able to connect to these microservices from out of these vpcs so that should be secured okay so let's go through the options one by one option a create an internet gateway to VPC1 and route VPC2 traffic to VPC1. Now, 
that is not at all correct why do we need to route the traffic from one vpc to another vpc so this is not the right answer option b create a nat gateway in vpc2 and route vpc1 traffic to vpc2 again same thing whether it's an internet gateway or nat gateway we do not need to route traffic from one vpc to the other one so b is also not correct option c make the subnets in public come on so if you make both uh, subnets are public then there is no security right so anyone from outside of these vpcs can connect to this microservices so which is not our requirement here option d create a nat gateway in both vpcs and configure routes for each vpc to use its own nat gateway so this is the correct option this is the right solution for this use case because each vpc will have its own nat gateway and do not need to route the traffic from one vpc to another vpc and also the external users or sources could not connect to the microservices so the option is d here question number 5 your team needs to install a 200 gb volume on an ec2 instance for their api the data usage is very less frequent with small peaks in the daytime as a solution architect what's your cost effective solution for their requirement okay so option a amazon ebs cold hdd so this is the right answer we do not need to look at the other options but uh, so let's try to understand why this ebs cold hdd would be the right solution for this requirement the volume data is used infrequently and not throughout the day right so only at peaks at the day time and the question requires the most cost effective solution so the cost effective storage type so the preferred choice would be amazon cold hdd cold hdd is suitable for the following scenarios throughput oriented storage for data that is infrequently accessed scenarios where the lowest storage cost is important so the correct answer is a amazon ebs cold hdd option b amazon s3 glacier is for the permanent storage and long term storage amazon ebs general purpose ssd so totally this is for large volumes of data and for the permanent storages option d amazon efs same thing so we can store the data in efs for long term storage purposes and it is uh, not cost effective it's very expensive so that's it for this session guys in the next session let's go with another five most free